Hello. Today I'm going to talk to you about the early diagnosis of brain tumours. Um, the information I've got is from a charity called HeadSmart. So to start with, um, you may not be aware of this, but 10 children and teenagers are diagnosed with a brain tumour every week in the UK. Do you know the signs and symptoms? Um, there's things like a persistent recurrent headache, persistent recurrent vomiting, balance coordination, walking problems, abnormal eye movements, blurred or double vision, loss of vision, behaviour changes, particularly lethargy, fits of seizures, Abnormal head positions such as wry neck, head tilt or stiff neck. Increase in head circumference, crossing from the centiles. Delayed or arrested puberty. So these are the symbols they use for this particular information. I have here a symptoms card. So first of all, I'm going to talk about this category. And this category is for babies under five years. So the signs and symptoms that you can get are persistent recurrent vomiting, balance coordination, walking problems, abnormal eye movements or suspected loss of vision, Behaviour change, particularly lethargy, fits or seizures, but not with a fever. Abnormal head positions, such as wry neck, head tilt or stiff neck. Increasing head circumference, crossing centriles. So, one symptoms, CGP. If there's two plus symptoms, ask the GP for an urgent referral. Um, things like abnormal eye movements or suspected loss of vision or abnormal head position and such as wry neck, head tilt and stiff neck. Um, see your GP and your optician. For children from 5 to 11 years, that's this section in the red, just here. So again, with these, it's persistent or recurrent headache, persistent or recurrent vomiting, balance, coordination, walking problems, abnormal eye movements, blurred or double vision, loss of vision, behaviour change, fits or seizures, abnormal head positions such as wry neck, head tilt or stiff neck. And again, if there's one symptom, see your GP. If there's two or more symptoms, ask the GP for an urgent referral. And the symptoms where you need to see your GP and your optician are persistent recurrent headaches, abnormal eye movements, blurred or double vision or loss of vision, and abnormal head positions such as a wry neck, head tilt or stiff neck. The next stage is for teens, which is age 12 to 18. They're the ones in the navy blue. So again, the signs and symptoms, persistent or recurrent headaches, persistent recurrent vomiting, Balance, coordination, walking problems, abnormal eye movements, blurred or double vision, loss of vision, behaviour change, fits or seizures, delayed or arrested puberty. And again, with one symptom, you see your GP. If you have two or more of these symptoms, you ask your GP for an urgent referral. 
and the symptoms where you need to see your GP and your optometrist are your persistent recurrent headaches, abnormal eye movements, blurred or double vision, loss of vision, and that would be your signs and symptoms for it. The next I'm just going to do a little bit of explaining with some diagrams as well. So in the, psych the psychiatry of it, you, there's um, problems of anorexia, behavioural change, depression and psychosis. Ophthalmology is papilledema, decreased visual acuity, nystagmus, paranoids, diplopia, squint, visual field defect, blindness, ptosis, proptosis, ocular pulses and ophthalmoplegia. Other areas, ear, nose and throat can cause dizziness, vertigo, torticollis, head tilt, hearing loss and tinnitus. It can also cause gastroenterology, which is nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, reflux, failure to thrive, dysphagia, respiratory recurrent chest infections and apneas, endocrinology which is growth problems, hyperpituitary dysfunction, diabetes insipidus, precocious or delayed puberty, menstrual irregularities, galacteria, gynecomastia, gynecomastia, Cushing's obesity and weight gain, neurology, seizures, motor weakness, CM palsies, ataxia cerebella, focal neurological deficit, defects, and community development delay, developmental regression and increased head circumference. So, Supratentorial tumours can cause change in personality, mood or disinhibition. They can also cause symptoms of anorexia. A brain tumour needs to be considered as part of the differential diagnosis. And that's where the brain tumour is there in white. Central tumours such as optic pathway, glioma or are slow growing and will present with progressive visual symptoms that may present to an ophthalmologist. And again, that's the function, that's the brain tumour there, again, the white part. Head tilt or ticulis can be caused by a posterior fossa tumour. These symptoms may present to ENT specialists as head tilt and torticollis have other common ENT causes. And again, you can see the, the picture there of it. A child with hydrocephalus caused by a brain tumour will have persistent vomiting. In infants where the sutures are not yet fused, there will be no other signs of hyprocephalus, aside from macrocephaly. And that again is the diagram for that one. Recurrent respiratory infections can occur secondary to aspiration caused by a bulbar palsy. This MRI shows a brain tumor, brainstem tumour which causes cranial nerve palsies. And you can see that that's there just at the join of the skull and the neck. Central tumour, such as a craniophoreal geoma 
are slow growing and will present with abnormal growth or precocious or delayed puberty. These children may also have visual symptoms. So again, you can see on the diagram, you can see the white is where the tumour is again. A subretentorial cortical tumour will present with focal neurological signs such as weakness. And that's the, the diagram for that one. And finally, a young child with hydrocephalus caused by a brain tumour will have an increasing head circumference and develop developmental delay or regression and again that's this diagram at the top in the middle so with the brain tumor charity um their motto is we're helping to find a cure faster Any child or teenage, teenager that are un, with symptoms that are unusual to him or her or are persistent or un, unexplained should be seen by a GP. If you are worried, make an appointment with your doctor. Please remember, any child or teenager needing urgent medical help should be taken to the nearest emergency do department or dial 999. Ten children and te teenagers are diagnosed with a brain tumour every week in the UK. That's more than one a day. Early diagnosis of brain tumours can save lives. Signs and symptoms of a brain tumour in an eye examination. Key facts about brain tumours. About 12,100 people a year in the UK are diagnosed with a primary brain tumour. It is the biggest cancer killer of the under 40s. 46% of people diagnosed are aged 65 or over. There are two different types of brain tumours, primary and secondary. Primary tumours originate within the brain whereas secondary tumours occur when cancer cells spread to the brain from a cancer that has started in another part of the body. There are over 130 different type of brain tumours affecting adults, children and young people. The tumours can occur in any part of the brain or brain stem. About half of brain tumours are low grade, grade 1 or 2, and half are high grade, grade 3 or 4. Some tumours can transform over time or have a mixed character. Low grade tumours can have a catastrophic and long lasting impact on the person diagnosed. The symptoms of a brain tumour will depend on its position in the brain and may mimic symptoms of other conditions. So that was the first section on this. Now I'm reading the second section. Possible symptoms of a brain tumour. Approximately 28% of adults with a brain tumour report a visual impairment or something abnormal with their vision. It has been reported that approximately 2 to 16% of patients have a headache as a sole symptom. Headaches are the main presenting symptom in papilledema, occurring in 60% of cases. Other cons common symptoms are, in children and young people, headaches, changes in vision, seizures, nausea and vomiting, balance problems, behaviour changes, abnormal head position, abnormal growth, Delayed puberty, reduced consciousness, excessive thirst. In adults, 
seizures, tiredness, changes in vision, nausea, dizziness, confusion, irritability, loss of consciousness. The third stage of this report now is history and symptoms. Headaches are a very common presenting symptom for those looking to have an eye examination. However, red flag signs of headaches resulting from brain tumours are worse in the morning, patients may wake with a headache or be woken from sleep by one, worse when coughing, sneezing, straining or bending over, associated with a whooshing sound, pulsatile tinnitus in the, present, in the person's ear, accompanied with nausea or vomiting not managed by painkillers. There is a previous history of cancer or family history of brain tumour. Clinical test findings indicative of brain tumours, visual acuity. There are many causes of variable or changing vision. However, symptoms which may indicate a brain tumour are Transient visual obscurations, a fleeting loss of vision lasting a few seconds, or grain out or dimming of their vision, particularly when there is a change in posture, i.e. sitting to standing, unexplained reduced visual acuity. Ocular muscle balance, external, recent onset of diplopia, head tilt, see an IV palsy, recent onset of nystagmus. Pupils. Recent onset relative afferent pupillary defect, RAPD, needs to be referred for further investigation. A new RAPD could indicate an asymmetrical compression. Imaging fundoscopy OCT features. Papilledema shows a thick retinal nerve fibre layer, RNFL. Compared with optic disc drusen, which have normal, thinner than normal RNFL thickness. OCT is not designed for picking up neurological defects unless it has a specific neuro program. Brooks membrane, RPE, is forward bowing in patients with papilledema. Always check fundus photo if they have been taken. However, your referral should be based on a 3D stereoscopic view with sit lamp and viewing lens rather than a 2D fundus view. Disc and retinal features. Obscured vessels, especially around the margin of the disc. They are obscured from odomatous tissue, lack of physiological cup, venous engorgement, blurred disc margins, increased diameter of the ONH, flame-shaped hemorrhages, patterns line, circum circumferential or radial chorioretinal folds, macular fan of exudates. Visual fields and visual field defects. Any new or repeatable field loss should be investigated for an intracranial lesion. Referral criteria. Refer as per the College of Optometrists Clinical Management Guidelines. Bilateral, bilateral optic disc swelling. Unexplained sudden loss of vision. New cranial nerve palsy. Newly acquired nystagmus diplopia ocular movement defects.